Hi, you are in the ladies' room with Dr. Donica, the only public ladies' room you can enter any time without ever waiting online. I'm your host, Dr. Donica Moore. We'll be having real conversations with real women about really intimate issues. They may be embarrassing, sad, or funny, but they will always be interesting and informative. You know, like the best conversations you've had in ladies' rooms with your best friends or total strangers and a physician. Please join us. Hello, and welcome to the ladies' room. Our next guest, Dr. Harry Fish, is the first gentleman we've invited into the ladies' room. Why? He's an expert in men's sexuality and health, something we care a lot about in the ladies' room. Dr. Fish is also a leading board-certified urologist, microsurgeon, and infertility researcher, as well as a professor of urology and reproductive medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medical College. He is an international leader in the field of men's health. But more importantly for our audience, as Chief Commercial Officer of Vero Pharmaceuticals, he is a leader in women's health now. He is one of the people responsible for the new improved female condom now widely available as FC2. And we are going to learn all about it. First, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Fish. His clinical practice includes treating men with hormonal and reproductive abnormalities, adolescents with disorders associated with potential future fertility issues, vasectomy reversals, and tons of prostate problems. He is a frequent flyer on lists of America's top doctors and was the host of the first national radio talk show devoted exclusively to men's health on the Howard Stern Network. He has written several books, including The Male Biological Clock, my personal favorite, Size Matters, the hard facts about male sexuality that every woman should know, and The New Naked, the ultimate sex education for grown-ups. And ever since we met a few years ago collaborating on the PBS special Living Grand with Jane Seymour in an episode called Sex Reeducation, we've talked about collaborating on a book or broadcasting project. So here's our next go at that. This episode is a triple header. It's airing as an episode of our podcast, which you're listening to, as well as a featured video on our Dr. Donica YouTube channel. But it also aired as the first episode in Dr. Harry Fish Live, Dr. Fish's new show on Twitch. And I know I hope you'll tune into that as well. I know you're all eager to hear Harry and I talk all about condoms, contraception, STDs, and more. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that he has degrees from SUNY Binghamton and Mount Sinai School of Medicine and did his residency training at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Montefiore Medical Center. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Harry Fish into the ladies' room. We're going to do a simultaneous show for us, and you have, Donica, the, the My podcast. My podcast is In the Ladies' Room with Dr. Donica, and you are the first male guest that we have allowed in the ladies' room. Have you this ever been the, in the ladies' room this before? Is, you know, I have not been in Never the ladies' room. Never once. Uh, I might have walked in by accident, but... No. See, most adult room. women have used the men's room at some point. So that's why we think this whole transgender bathroom bill debate and discussion is ridiculous. In interesting. Because though. most of us have been at the theater or at a convention or at a baseball game. And you go where into the, the line room? is so ridiculously long at the ladies' room. And usually we have a guy who's on our team who goes and scopes it out <laughs> first. Like and then we kind of all run in. But one of my most famous stories in the men's room was a time when my guy didn't scope it out very well. And we walked in and there were three guys doing what they do at the urinal. And they looked horrified. And the women were just like, we've seen that before. Unimpressive. They just we're just going right to by. the stalls. That's amazing. So we're going to talk today, with Danica. We're going to talk about, well, you know, let, let's hear about who you are because it's your show. Okay. And then I'll introduce myself. Okay. Well, let's do that. Well, this is we're doing this tandem. We're this, is tandem. Live. this is tag team. This is so a... basically what I wanted to talk to you about was what I was calling in my mind, which is a wonderful place to be, Condoms 101 and Condoms 2.0. So we'll get to that. Uh, but I am trained in gynecology. You're trained in urology. Um, so we're used to talking about all things sex-related and both ends, both the lady parts and the male parts. And you and I met when we were doing right. a show with Jane Seymour on PBS. Um, That's right. I, I forgot, it was Living Grand with Jane Seymour. And we did an episode called Sex Reeducation. And I remember at the time we had a blast. You know, the three of us were just going. That's actually a good title for a book. It's a great title for Sex a book. Sex re-education. And a great title for a, a, show. a show. 
And we said at the time... Actually, this is... The new show is called Sex, Sex Re-Education. Education. We said at the time we were going to do a Dr. Donica and Dr. Harry Fish kind of thing. And then we didn't get it together till today. Well, so we're doing it. The reason we didn't get together because I went a little different way. I, you know, I had um, a show on Howard mm-hmm. Stern. Mm-hmm. So I got the media. It was, everything's been an accident mm-hmm. for me. Well, uh, I don't call it an accident. And I call it Celestine or I call it serendipitous. Okay. Uh, so that just means you didn't plan it, but... You know, accident connotes that it kind of was messy and wasn't meant to be. True. But, uh, I'm Pollyanna. I put a positive spin okay, on I'll, everything. All right. So <laughs> somehow I got to the Howard Stern show. I had a, the Dr. Harry Fish show there with, mm-hmm. with a guy named Shuley, who was a great guy. He is a great guy. And we probably are going to be doing that again. We will be doing it again on Twitch. But then I also um, started a pharmaceutical company hmm. Yeah, called Aspen Park Pharmaceuticals. In your spare time. In my spare time. That's right. Because I, I am a practice. And you practice. Well, yeah, I don't I, I practice. Like, I like operating. I like seeing yeah. patients. It's and it's a, it's a wonderful practice. So so uh, started this Aspen Park Pharmaceuticals, and then we merged with a company called the Female Health Company. Now the irony of that is a men's health mm-hmm. company with a female health company. Just think about that. Together had a baby. We called Viru. <laughs> That's right. The baby is called Viru. V E R U. It's on Nasdaq. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the female health company made the female condoms. As a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And we want to hear all about it. And uh, I did try it in preparation because I always do my homework. So <laughs> but you I have did, a lot but to you say. didn't look at the video on how to put it in. I didn't because you didn't tell me to do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, it takes it takes a little get getting. You got to get the. Well, in fact, we'll show it. We'll, we'll show, show it. How, to, how to put it. I, we're not going to show me inserting it, but we. You have a model. <laughs> um, I'm not willing to do that much for my patients. In fact, I'm sure you have the experience where people come up to your cocktail parties all the time and ask you for medical advice and medical. Well, I don't like going to cocktail parties, but I do. I, I love saying. going to cocktail parties yeah, and events. Asking. And I came up with a thing probably 25 years ago, where I started saying to people, <coughs> "I am happy to give you, you know, any medical advice, so long as you're willing to lie down right here and have your internal examination." Uh, because I can't possibly give you medical advice on your GYN problems if I haven't properly examined you. And nobody has taken me up on it yet. Yeah, I, uh, well, right there in the living room is probably not the uh, Well, and speaking place. of in the living room, because I talk about being in the ladies' room, um, I always say to people, you know, I've done a lot of television over the years, and I always say to people, just because I'm in your living room does not mean you're in my examining room. So I always tell people the most, you know, this is background in medical information, whatever you and I talk about. But I, but you the know, most men, important place men, to go men, are, men are, uh, uh, men don't go to doctors, right? So the only so how do you kind stay of information, in the only information they get is in the cocktail, you know, mm-hmm. parties and everything. They, 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 I feel so bad because we, we just, we don't have the information available for us. That's why this show. That's, that's why you that's need this women. About. So well, I, no, you need the show. You need at least, right, together, a gynecologist and a neurologist seems to be like unstoppable. Perfect. But I used to say, I used to... You know, By the every, way, we're both from Brooklyn, <laughs> which is shocking. So you know yeah. you're in trouble now. Um, so you know this episode is going to be like That's seven right. hours. But you told me you went to an interesting school. What was it called? The, I went to, for high school? Uh, yes. I went to Hunter Brooklyn. College High School and then first. The, and then is, I, you got to be pretty Which smart. was a great school. And it, at the time, it was all girls. Right. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It started as an all-girls school. Right, are you talking about and, the one on, on Madison Avenue? Well, now it's there. When I went there, it was on the 13th and 14th floors in an office building on Lexington and 43rd. That's amazing. Uh, the building is still there, but obviously the school is not still there. And one of my classmates was also one of my classmates at Princeton later on and is now on the Supreme Court, Elena Kagan. Wow. Was one of my classmates. Wow, that's amazing. Um, but we went... Uh, Hunter went co-ed a few years but, but ago. Then, but you finished but up then I switched because of the commute uh, to Franklin K. Lane High School Franklin in Brooklyn. Franklin K. Lane. Never which was the worst high school <laughs> in the whole United States as judged by, in the 1970s, having the highest murder rate. Wow. And I take gun violence extremely, extremely well, seriously. But I want to tell everybody that in the 1970s, when I was at Franklin K. Lane High School... The high school, by the way, that Mike Tyson's mother was afraid to send him to, so he went to Catholic school. But we had those airport metal detectors How bad at is the that? entrance to our school in yes, the 1970s. I remember that. I remember, that was I went, a thing. I went to Midwood High School. Could you imagine going to a school mm-hmm. where Mike Tyson's mother thought it was too dangerous? That's and she was, she was right. My mother that was a better. teacher at 
at Lane. Oh, is that right? For 30 years. Um, wow. Fortunately, a very popular teacher because teachers were getting burned in the school. It was, it was a pretty violent place. Um, but because my mother was a teacher, I never went to the cafeteria, not once, and I never went to the girls' bathroom, oh, wow. not once. I wow. used the teacher's bathroom if I had to go, and I had my schedule set up so that you know I was done by lunchtime. Uh, and I would just, just try, walk home. I'm trying to get this uh, so that not in the field here. Yeah, we're technical difficulties. There. <laughs> technical. <laughs> and hold on, am I getting it? Yeah, you can hear me. But I went to Midwood High School. Mm -hmm. I loved uh, Midwood High School. I used to go there from Model Congress. That's right. And so we have, we have a connection. Where I got all my Brooklyn. political education. Well, liberal liberal education <laughs> from Brooklyn, exactly. That's what I am anyway. So anyway, so, so um, um, I have this company. Mm -hmm. So I, I have major interest in drug development, mm -hmm. but we took over the female condom business. So that's why I think, you know, I am a professor of, um, of uh, urology and reproductive medicine at Cornell. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, from Brooklyn. That's not bad. That's not bad. I didn't start uh, at Princeton, but More I ended Nobel up More Nobel Prize winners are from Brooklyn than any true. other place. Absolutely. BT dubs. Absolutely. One of my good friends is Richard Axel. He's the uh, Nobel uh, Laureate from Columbia. I don't I know him, but my time. mentor, this is a good story, my first mentor, because of course, you know, in a career this long, you've had many if you're lucky. But my first mentor my, who hired me for my first job in college as my first medical job was Dr. Philip Levine, who was the guy who discovered RH factors in blood, um, who then connected the dots to figure out how to solve the issue of in infant hemolytic disease when the mother and a baby have an RH incompatibility. And that led to the dis development and discovery of Rogam, which is a life-saving medication, which, fun fact, is celebrating its 50th anniversary wow. this year. But he was always, I worked for him until he was 92 years old, uh, he was unbelievable, but he was always very, very, very resentful that he did not get the Nobel well, Prize. He was resentful for that? Well, one of his competitors did get the Nobel yeah, Prize. Yeah, but, but he, he accomplished a lot. That was an ego issue. Oh, but he, but he I, deserved it. I will tell you, though, role models are, are so important. Mm -hmm. Without role models, and by the way, you don't have to have a good role model. It could be a bad role Absolutely. model. Absolutely. As long as you know that you don't want to be like that person <laughs> or you want to be like... So, that, that you know, and you bring up the point that role modeling is so important. Well, and mentorship. Yes. Yeah. But I used I started saying earlier that, um, you know, I've done a lot of media and television in the past 25, 30 years. And I used to say, you know, people would say, what do you talk about? And I would say, I talk about everything in women's health. And then I would always joke, I talk about everything except prostate cancer. And then a year or two later, I got contacted by a group, Women Against Prostate Cancer, because their idea was to educate women about prostate cancer because women are the ones who get their the men in their lives, whether they're their spouses, partners, fathers, sons, etc., to right. get their butts right. to the doctor. Literally. So that's, literally. That, was li that was literally the campaign message. Get your <laughs> butts. <laughs> and actually, we stole that from Katie Couric, who used that <laughs> slogan when she was that's talking about Get your butts to the doctor. I like that. You know, she was you know, a huge advocate. And I'm sure you read the article in the New England Journal of Medicine that talked about the Katie Couric effect, which was you know, a celebrity using her voice and her tragic situation of losing her husband at a very young age sure. to colon cancer. And she really raised awareness about colon cancer well, to the point where colonoscopies skyrocketed. You, you know, what's interesting is that's what this show is all about. That's what mm -hmm. my old show was all about, is trying to get information. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, daytime TV has so mm -hmm. many shows. It's all yeah. for women, including Mehmet Oz's show. Mm -hmm. but, but there's not much for men. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that you reached out and get the butts to, mm -hmm. to the doctor, educated about prostate cancer. By the way, it was always an interesting uh, note, statistically, as many men get prostate cancer as women get breast mm -hmm. cancer. And as many men who um, um, die of prostate cancer, that's as many women that die of... Is it of, a um, quarter of a million men who are diagnosed each year with prostate cancer? It's about the same number. I thought one it was in, smaller that was diagnosed, but the same number die per no, year. No, it's, it's roughly one in six women. Mm -hmm. to one in, it depends how you define breast cancer, right, the CIS. Mm -hmm. But let's say roughly one in six to one in seven women mm -hmm. will get breast cancer. One in six to one in seven men get mm -hmm. prostate cancer, newly diagnosed. Of the ones that get breast cancer, one in six will die of breast cancer. One in six men will die of prostate cancer. So I don't think that's correct with women because 250,000 women a it, year this, get diagnosed. They changed the 40, 
forty to forty one thousand a year die. So two hundred six is one so in seven. Math? One in six to one in seven. Yeah. But it depends. It's still how, unacceptable. But it depends how you define it because DCIS used to be considered. Right, and DCIS is ductal carcinoma in situ. For you know, in Correct. medicine, we come up with acronyms. For everything, we come up with really complicated names, and then we have to. But it may it. not be a breast cancer per se. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with right. prostate cancer. We have. Well, we're sometimes calling that score. stage zero. Now. Correct, correct. So a lot of women are getting treated. Mm -hmm. When the question is, do they really need to be treated for DCIS? There's mm -hmm. a whole controversy. That's a huge that. controversy, and a lot of people are advocate the pendulum is swinging a little bit That's to right. ongoing surveillance. That's right. The challenge is we don't right now have a great diagnostic tool from ongoing That's surveillance. That's right. However, the good news is there are tools in development that are currently going through the FDA process, which you know, hopefully will help us do a better job with ongoing surveillance. But think about how similar it is to men with, with mm -hmm. prostate cancer. Gleason 6 prostate cancer, which is about 40% of all mm -hmm. cancers, may not kill you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. So surveillance, how, you, know, you know, how do we, unfortunately right now we're detecting Disorders, cancers ish, that may not hurt you, but yeah. yet the the diagnosis and the treatment may not be necessary. So so we're really yeah. caught in the middle. But the point well, is, we, men and women are in the same the same boat. Well, we just had a fabulous woman um, on our podcast, who's uh, in this category that we're now calling previvors. So a previvor is a woman like Angelina Jolie who tested positive for BRCA one mm -hmm. or BRCA two, the breast cancer right. genes. And they're making the decision to take very aggressive, preventive, prophylactic action, which is generally surgical. So they are often deciding to either have a prophylactic bilateral mastectomy and have their ovaries removed and have their fallopian or have their fallopian tubes removed because we now know that most ovarian cancers originate in the fallopian tubes. But this woman, woman was very articulate, but I asked her, the question, you know, the million dollar question for me, and I, you know, knock wood, am not in that situation. And many times it's hard for us to imagine how we would behave if we were in that situation. But I said to her, if you were sitting here with stage one breast cancer, actual breast cancer, I wouldn't be recommending a bilateral mastectomy, right. which is major, major surgery. Um, and, you know, major subsequent surgeries if you elect reconstruction. Right. So why would you choose to have a bilateral mastectomy if you don't have cancer yet? And that's where fear comes in. And, you know, this number that your risk is increased by 80% oh, is th very, very This scary. is why that saying that term cancer, remember you the said... The C word. Cancer. Oh, when I was a kid, they didn't you say the say word. It. They said... The big C. <laughs> but, it, but if you use that word, and we really need a different nomenclature. We need a different name mm -hmm. for these, what they're called cancers now, but may not be cancer. Mm -hmm. You tell a man who has Gleason 6 prostate, and certainly the five years, seven years ago, you know, they had their prostates removed. Mm -hmm. Surveillance was not, a, not an issue. Now, just think about it. Now, the breast is external. Mm -hmm. The prostate is deep in the pelvis. And so many complications occur from removing it. Either erectile dysfunction and urinary incontinence and Fecal incontinence occurs when you have a radiation therapy in many mm -hmm. times. So there, there are consequences to this. And I, I wish, I want to see where it's going to be 10 years from now, but I can tell you that, mm -hmm. that you know, there are new tests for PSA and, you know, like they have something called a 4K score test. Mm -hmm. K is calocrine, PSA is a calocrine protein, whatever that means. So this is a super duper new test mm -hmm. to determine whether you actually have aggressive cancer or not. And I think that's the key. You need to determine whether you have a disorder that's going to hurt you. Right. As opposed to having something you probably die with. Right. And this is not something that you generally figure out how you're going to handle it in one visit. That's and right. I think people need to understand that process. But obviously, you and I could talk all day about all of these issues. But what just we're so here you know, today to just talk so about. Just so you know, everybody <laughs> listening and watching, we've been talking for at least an hour before. And we were talking about politics. We're, we're talking about <laughs> so we can't have any of that stuff on the air, That's unfortunately. Right. But that was really good. Um, yeah, we, we joked about we're going to have a political show another time. But today, what we're here to talk about well, is So we condoms. went from prostate cancer to condoms. And by the way, it's such even, I, I don't even, it's, I, I don't want to equate, I don't want to say one, one issue is more than the other, but holy cow, people are just not aware of reproductive health. It is Absolutely. remarkable. And you know, what we have going on right now is a, 
STD epidemic. Were you aware of that? Of course. <laughs> An STD epidemic. You know, who, and it's not, I'm not just saying it. Danica's not mm-hmm. saying it. It's actually the, the CDC yeah. says we have an epidemic. Yeah. And every year it gets worse and worse. And, yeah. and the New York City, we, uh, New York State, the Department of Health, uh, Howard Zucker, mm-hmm. who's the Commissioner of Health, just had a, um, a release saying that there's an epidemic now, or uh, I'm going to call it an epidemic. There's an increase in syphilis. In uh, New York State. Yeah, which is a terrible disease. So here's the thing, and this is why we started the Syphilis. podcast in the ladies' room, uh, because we want to talk about all of these things that are embarrassing or stigmatized or that women would only talk about in the ladies' room. We do have a lot of male uh, listeners, uh, and I only know this because they send me questions and emails and comments and things. Right. Um, and I think the reason is because men have been dying for decades to know what do you talk about in the ladies' room? Why does it take you so long? So, you know, these are the kinds of things we're talking about. But it takes that conversation. And STDs are one of the things we talk Oof. about a lot because they are embarrassing. And there's a tremendous amount of misinformation, especially among adults who you would think would know better. I think in many cases, the young people are more well-educated about well, this. Well, uh, that's true. By the, and we you always... and I were also discussing, just to backtrack a little bit, we were discussing uh, this huge increase in divorces after people have been married 20 or more years. So what we have as a result of that is a lot more people entering the dating pool who are over 50. Throwing Viagra, now they can have erections. Now they want to go out and, and, and get an STD. Well, and what we're seeing in women is a bimodal distribution of HPV, or human papillomavirus, which is a very common STD. So we're seeing a huge spike in people in their 20s where we would expect it. But we're seeing this other huge spike in women in their 50s. And watch how I get us back into topic on condoms. Because women in their 50s who are re-entering the dating pool are not necessarily using condoms because they're not worried about getting pregnant. So this is a sex well, re-education you issue. You bring up such an important mm-hmm. issue. Is that Now, I am a professor of reproductive medicine, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to ask you all a question. What's the only, what's the way to prevent an STD? And it seems so, uh, you know, because, you know, the, an STD is a, like Nancy a Reagan control. said, just say no. Well, it, <laughs> if, if you are having sex, the only way to prevent it is barrier protection, mm-hmm. a condom. Let's think about that. A condom, which was developed, who knows how many years ago. Mm-hmm. Condoms, barrier protection. So unfortunately, because of, of like you just brought up, people uh, who are, uh, you know, are past the reproductive age mm-hmm. of having children. You don't want to say the sexual age, reproductive age. And with all the, the thinking about uh, birth control pills mm-hmm. and different birth control methods mm-hmm. and the morning after pill, and all, none of that prevents an STD. Well, you know what condoms used to be called 100 years ago? Rubber is what? Pro, well, actually, do you know who, uh, you, fun fact, speaking of politics, I'll keep yeah. it clean. George Bush the first, his nickname when he was a freshman congressman <laughs> was Rubbers because he advocated condom distribution in schools. Wow, good for him. That's so great. So isn't that awesome? Yes, that is. So how's that for uh, trivia? Okay. But another piece of trivia, condoms were originally called prophylactics. That was right, what the right. lay term was, right, right. because they they were given to soldiers in right. the, you know World War II. I think they started giving out prophylactics because they didn't want them to get syphilis and gonorrhea, which were the Ooh. diseases of the day. Penicillin was developed uh, during World War II, right? Mm-hmm. So oof, you got gonorrhea, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Now you know why they're called rubbers. I don't know. I assume they were originally made from rubber. Rubber. Rubber is latex. Yeah. So when you get a male condom, you always see it's called latex. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, there's some issues. Yeah, but that's correct. Mm-hmm. But 98% is, is latex. The reason is because mm-hmm. it's so cheap. Right. But it's made out of the same thing. And so we'll discuss the, the huge, female condom, which is not made out of And one of the huge problems that we have with some people are latex allergies that they've developed. Minimum 10% in the in the population. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a matter of fact, healthcare workers have a much higher yeah. rate. A good friend is... of mine was actually a, uh, a nurse practitioner and developed a latex allergy and had to become a French teacher because Amazing. she just she but, can't even be around it. But let me ask you a question. So if there is a latex allergy of about really between 5 and 10% mm-hmm. of, of the general population, if you're exposed to latex at an earlier age. You know you know who has the highest? This is interesting. Um, 
highest incidence of latex allergies are kids that had spina bifida. Isn't that interesting? I did not know that. Why? Because they had surgeries earlier on. They were, and exposed, they were to exposed to it. So the more you're exposed to it, so why would you, there's so many parts about the condom business that to me is mind boggling. So let's take it to, let's take it from the beginning. All right. So I figured we'd have this conversation about condoms 101, the basic information about condoms in general. And then we'd talk about condoms 2.0, which is the female condom. That's right. Because condoms are not for men only. Uh, in these days. Now, we did get to the You've Come a Long Way Baby and the Sexual Revolution, okay, well, where women started carrying and providing their own condoms for men. But now we can kind of take matters into our own hands. I'm going to ask you, Kat, this is, this is what got me, because we, we took over the female health company. We, well, we were merged with the female health company about a year ago. And I asked a doctor, and I'm going to ask you, and I, you, you never heard, you weren't really aware <laughs> that the female condom was around. I, I actually really was. But, it, but not in the United States. <laughs> I really was. All right. You were I, one of the I ones. Was in, I, I, I was, was not. I, I was, was not. A, on the board of directors of the Society for Women's Health Research when okay. we were lobbying for the pop council. But it never, it never made it. it really in the no, United States. No, it did States. not. And it's because now, it's, now it's coming back. In now fairness, back. in fairness, I don't know if you ever tried one of the original female condoms. No, it was made out of polyurethane, which is a it, problem. And it was also very difficult to insert. And it Forget was about very that. large and floppy. So, yeah, what I do want to tell show everybody. show you how, how to insert it. Right. What I want to tell everybody who's listening is forget about anything you ever knew before about the female condom because we're up to 2.0. And but, that's what you called it, but was I, FC2. I, that's right. I, I asked a, a doctor, a woman doctor, mm -hmm. I said, uh, tell me, how do you, what do you tell women, how to, what do you do to prevent an STD? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I tell them to tell the man to wear a condom. Mm -hmm. I'm going, let, let me think about this mm -hmm. a second. You know where I'm going with I this. I do. So women's uh, empowerment and what have you, and the only way that you tell patients to protect themselves is have the guy wear a condom. You can't rely on guys to do very much, <laughs> much less wear a condom because yeah. about half of men don't wear condoms regularly. But nevertheless, so, that's know, a whole other thing. So we talked about only about 10% of the population being allergic to latex, yeah. but I think about 90% of men say they're allergic to latex and they can't <laughs> use a condom. <laughs> Uh, they always I told find women, a reason not to wear a condom. And there's what, a reason for that. What I used to tell women was, if he's not willing to wear a condom, then he needs to go elsewhere. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. There's always that negotiation that I found mm -hmm. out recently. Uh, we both have a friend, Steve Carlos, and he's mm -hmm. got a large group of people working for him. And I, and, I, and I really was able to talk to the women, not just there, but all over. Mm -hmm. And I said, one of the things uh, that uh, the female condom is, is beneficial for and we'll discuss the female condom mm -hmm. in a second. But, and I wasn't aware of this, but you are aware of mm -hmm. it, that there's always a negotiation. Mm -hmm. What happens, this is unbelievable, during sex, in order to put a condom on, a man doesn't put a condom on before he's having sex. Right. He has to be, has, you know, has to be fully ready to, to put, so in the middle of sex, they stop, and, and men don't want to put a condom. Uh, that's where the negotiation Well, what occurs. I always told women to do is that they should put, the condom. And also, but, but this uh, wait, I need to say one thing. We're obviously talking a lot about heterosexual sex, but condoms are also extremely important in homosexual sex. So Critical. we're, you know, using the generic he and she, but obviously when it's two men having sex, this is extremely important. When it's two women having sex, we have other issues that are important. So this is just something well, I don't want to go unacknowledged. You know, we, we, we have a lot of energy, so we're like going all over the place. <laughs> this is clearly not moderator. scripted. But I will tell you, since you brought that up, so when we picked up the uh, working with the female condom, we went to New York City Department of Health. Mm -hmm. And they love the female condom. They don't even want to call it a female condom. They want to call it. And by, I wouldn't even That's describe what a female condom is yet. We'll get mm -hmm. to it. It's really an internal condom. Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, homosexual population... The men having sex with men prefer the female condom, the internal condom, because there's less for friction sex. for anal sex. That's right. And so, because they can pre-insert it. That's correct. And you don't have to insert that, it at correct. the time uh, that you need or at that moment. That, that's correct. So, and of course, this is the preferred choice of prostitutes. You know, for the same reason. Or actually, Correct. we're not saying prostitutes anymore. Sex workers. Sex, that's right. I heard a that's fabulous right. it, 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 interview on Tim Ferriss's podcast with a woman who claims to be the most highly paid sex work, legal sex worker in the United States. Is a legal, legal sex worker? In Nevada. Oh. 
You know, so in, and she told me they're required to have complete STD testing every week. That the, sounds the, there's just one problem. Excessive. There's no test for HPV. In, in men. Women too. Yeah, I mean, there's a test for women and it's for HPV. Hard, but there's so many subtypes. Right. There's a, all right. So there's a hundred strains. You can't test for what all the strains. What we test for are what we call the oncogenic strains, or the strains most likely. And of course, to, for anybody who hasn't listened to my podcast yet and doesn't know, HPV is the virus that is responsible for 99.9 percent of cervical cancers and many other cancers. Throat as well. cancer. Throat cancer. Anal cancer. Uh, peni- certain penile cancers. Um, so right. this is a real issue. And of course, there's a vaccine, which I'm a If you don't take the vaccine, you got to be crazy. Strong advocate. Well, you got to take it before you start. Your parents sex. have to, Correct. you know, do that. So that's a big issue because obviously, if somebody did not get the vaccine when they were, you know, before they were 18 and wanted to do it themselves, they could. But we want them to have it. What I always say is, ideally, a year before they even think of having sex, which is why nine years but old is a really you good. You bring age. up a good point. Once they start having sex, if they didn't have it, they still right. might not have gotten the strains. It's, right. it's a good, but it's just a not idea. as effective. Of course. Of and course. that's why the approved age only went up to twenty six, because I guess the designers of this study never thought that anyone over twenty six would still. Well, it's be going to be virgin. less efficacious. But there are people right, right, who are. right. If you're not had, right. If you're thirty years old and never had sex, this is. And right. you're going to start your insurance sex. company may not pay for it, which is a whole so other that gets us back to the political don't stuff. Don't get it started. But it's a huge <laughs> investment. And of course, now it's approved for boys as well. And it's probably one of the most common questions I get from soccer moms is should I have my son vaccinated? And, you know, there it's a little trickier because most people who are mothers of nine year old boys don't think they're going to grow up to get anal and penile cancer which is relatively rare, thank goodness. Uh, But they're getting the vaccine so that the women he has sex with are not going to get HPV. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, So I was at Columbia University Medical Center for about 20 years. I was a professor of urology there. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, since I do fertility, we have, you know, there's a lot of bacteria that Mm -hmm. cause, you know, infertility. And- Chlamydia? uh, But no, no, just urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. Women have, you know, E. coli, uh, mm-hmm. Klebsiella infection. Men have it too, and it affects the sperm. So I said, I want to know, maybe there's some viruses. So we we checked that there was a there was a famous guy that showed up, and I did uh, collaborated with him. And it turns out we looked at semen for viruses, and we couldn't find any viruses other than HPV. In the semen, you have HPV at approximately twenty percent, depending on what study you quote now. But when I when I first did it, I was so nervous because I said. 20% have HPV? Mm-hmm. How is that possible? Because you don't see a visible lesion. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the subtypes now reported are 16, 18, are really uncle. Mm-hmm. So men are giving it to other people right. without even knowing that they have. Right. And by the way, it's uh, present in sperm donors too. Because they don't it's, check. So there's no way to screen for They're that? They're not screening for it for All sperm right, so donors. that's a concern. So oh, that's a concern. <laughs> Whoa, that's a <laughs> That's, that's a definitely concern. a concern. So but the so the that's the what issue, got me scared. The when, issue when I tell scared. women is what's unusual about HPV is yes, you can get it if you have sex with one person one time. That's ever. right. That's right. But it's not the kind of infection that turns up the next week or two. You could it could cause it, problems 20, 30, 40 right. years later. So what I always do warn women about is of course, you know, women want to blame somebody and hold somebody accountable if there's a problem. This is not the kind of thing, unless you only had sex. They blame us, right? Unless you only had, well, because it's usually your fault. But <laughs> unless unless you only had sex with somebody one time, uh, one person, then you can't really blame somebody. You know, somebody. I like to tell people, you know, if you've had a wart on your finger, you know, sometimes it, it goes away, it could come back. It's the same thing. It's the same concept. So let's go back to condoms a second. Yes. And we have to focus on condoms for the rest of our time because otherwise this is going to be 27 <laughs> hours long. Well, we could talk for 10 hours straight. We could. Yeah. We could. So we're going to do, I just gonna do to the muscular dystrophy uh, telethon next year. <laughs> condoms 24-7. Did you know the, uh, one of the big problems with condoms is, and, uh, again, it seems like so simple. Like mm-hmm. The only way to prevent an STD is to wear a condom, right? Mm-hmm. The only way. You want to repeat that. Or not have sex. Well, if you're having sex, mm-hmm. the only way is... Um, about 50% of men will not wear a condom 
after one month, particularly in a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's data from the CDC. So it, what's, what's uh, unbelievable is, and you said, well, you tell patients or you tell women, you know, if, if a man doesn't want to put a kind of forget about the relationship. But it turns out being in a relationship is not easy, and a lot of people cherish that relationship. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women are scared after being with uh, a guy for a month or two to say, look, well, if you don't wear a condom, it's over. So I think there's a lot of pressure on women to stay in a but relationship. A, this is a good so, question. And a lot of women will, will, will you know, have sex without a condom mm -hmm. to keep that relationship going. Or because they're tired of using condoms also. It's not That's right. ideal for women either. And you know why, why isn't it ideal? I'll tell you why it's not ideal. Because I am now the condom expert. The condom king. The condom king. Latex, but are you wearing rubber. condoms? No, I've been married. Because it, well, because in the ladies' room, we ask all those questions. And here's the issue. And this is, uh, maybe you have a good answer to this question. I don't, and I've asked every gynecologist I know this question, and nobody has a good answer. So say you're in a relationship with somebody for maybe it's a month, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a My year, wife maybe it's would be so years. upset at me. At what point, at what point in the relationship is it okay to say... All right, we don't need condoms anymore. Yeah. And we always say, so long as you're in a mutually monogamous relationship, then it's okay to stop using condoms. Right. However, who's always the last one to know they're no longer in a mutually mon monogamous relationship? That's right. So, like, at what point? Yeah. And in the old days, we used to say, if you're not married. But now there are many couples who have I, no I, intention of getting married. I don't have an or, answer for that. What is the answer? I, I don't have an answer. I don't have a good answer. And I think How come you're... I and I always have a good answer for something or I make it up. But what I no, usually no say now is if you're secure in the relationship and you're secure in feeling like it's a mutually monogamous relationship and you're willing to take a risk and you have another means of contraception. So contraception is out of the picture because still 50 percent of all pregnancies are unintended. Um, so that's um, correct. We still while we talk about STDs a lot with condoms. We do not want to minimize the contraceptive value and benefits That's right. of condoms. That's right. Um, so I, I don't know the answer when you stop, uh, but I, I think I, I think that sometimes you know we talk about STDs, and it is a serious thing because if you get an STD, you're at higher risk of getting HIV, and HIV is an STD if mm -hmm. you think about it. Um, so, so just having and gonorrhea is back, and there's issues with fertility, you know, associated with that. Urination issues, pain, discomfort. There's a lot of stuff that can that can happen. There. Anger, hostility. No, oh, then that's right. Murder, murder. Um, but let's go back a, a second to the reason they're called rubbers is because they're made out of latex. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues is if a man puts on a condom and with a woman, that that's rubber, you know, penetrating and going in and, in and, and rubbing out and rubbing. That's right. So 95% of women need lubrication, regardless of what the age. Mm -hmm. but of course, as you get older. So women who are older mm -hmm. with a, with the male condom, the rubbing aspect of it, and of course, a lot of women as they get older have, you know, atrophy, atrophic vaginitis, which means which we just dryness. Which we talk about on our podcast. We talk about vaginal dryness after menopause, and we talk about painful sex after menopause But it's painful sex if you, if you have a, a rubber so like a with tire. a condom or without a condom, Correct. it's still a problem. That's right. So, so the, the question is, what is, so nobody wants to wear a condom. There has to be a new condom. And we didn't talk about herpes, oh, herpes by is, the way, which is still but also herpes, you know, affects like one I, in five I'm gonna sexually tell you active something. adults. I saw a show called uh, Adam Ruins Everything. That sounds like a show I would love. What a great show. Heard and it. it had a thing about herpes. Mm -hmm. And it changed my attitudes about herpes. And from what to what? Adam Ruins Everything talks about how herpes is so bad. And herpes is bad. Of course, if you have herpes, you have a blister on your, on, on, in a genital area. And remember I said that you're much higher risk of getting HIV and other mm -hmm. STDs that are associated with it. So a herpes is a blister. It could be a blister on the, on the lip, mm -hmm. right? A cold scar. It's really the same thing. The herpes virus is all over the place. Mm -hmm. There's so many different subtypes. It's herpes 1 and 2. Number 2 is, mm -hmm. is in the genital area. But it's a blister down there. Mm -hmm. And according to um, um, uh, uh, Adam Ruins Everything, is I think he's saying, and I don't disagree, we may have overblown it. And where did he go to medical school? He didn't go to medical school. <laughs> what is uh, the risk, of course, is pain. And of course, and, and horrific and, uh, complications of vaginal deliveries, uh, horrible complications. But to I want to make a point. I, I want to make okay. a point, though. The point is, you can't be paralyzed 
if you have herpes. No. You know, I feel bad. We see people. Unless you have a really are, bad case. And, yes, I mean, but we also of, have treatment. But we could treat them for We it also now. have treatment. So it's not like, you know, I see so many people, they, they want a body condom because yeah. they're just so, we, we, we're scaring everybody. Mm -hmm. We need to scare you, but. Uh, just we, a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to be, you know, well, no, to I always be aware say, don't it. be scared. Be educated. Yeah, this is that's not right. something I that's want right. people to that's worry right. about. That's right. I want them to take action. But if you do that. get it, you need to know what to do about it, and you really need to know how to prevent it. So mm -hmm. let me go back for one second, mm -hmm. back to the female condom for an issue. So again, so the only way a woman can prevent an STD mm -hmm. is to have a guy wear a condom. That's ridiculous. As far as I'm concerned, that's ridiculous. How is that possible mm -hmm. that you've come this far? Yeah, and this is what this is. How, you have to take control of your own bodies, mm -hmm. right? We've said this all along, yeah. right? So if a woman wears a, a female condom or an internal condom, you could put that, that condom on before you're having mm -hmm. sex, hours before you're having sex. Yeah, I said it reminds me kind of of the diaphragm in a way. It is a, the, the new female And let me just show you what it is. I want you to show not only what it is, but I want you to show way, also how in, to insert it. Because It comes have in a, 12 packs. Mm -hmm. It's covered by insurance. We'll go over all the ways you can get it. But mm -hmm. first of all, let me show you what it is. We have a artificial educational vagina here. Mm -hmm. Right, because a lot of people are that not aware. That means that we can't show this on Facebook. Do you know Facebook rejects my Facebook Live videos if I talk about sex and vaginas? Is that right? I once showed a picture. I was I was on a tirade while you're blowing that up. One of my pet peeves is when people use the word vagina to refer to the external genitalia. That drives me nuts. That's the vulva. So I, a reporter had done this in a headline, and I was angry about it, so I was showing a very simple anatomically correct labeled diagram and Facebook you know targeted my video on Facebook well, live saying we, we this make is inappropriate we may get thrown off twitch for this but this mm. is education we're not saying anything that's mm -hmm. unreasonable so this is the cue and it, it, you can see there's an internal yeah what I usually use is just my fist yes, and I make a fist thing. and this is your vagina and this is your cervix one of the things uh, with uh, the female health company and the uh, products is they do have an educational component too. I love the video that so you have. What's her name? Amanda? Amanda Ask Amanda. Video. It's unbelievable. She is terrific. So what's the website? You go to femalecondom.com. Femalecondom.com. Yeah, that video was terrific. Um, educational. And plus, we have people who have used it, explain mm -hmm. it. So, but let me show you what it is. Here's the condom. It comes pre lubricated, which means it's very slippery. So, this is really a diaphragm with a sheath, mm -hmm. is all it is. You have an internal ring, mm -hmm. and for anal sex, this ring is removed. Mm -hmm. So all it is is that's the external which, which ring. Which ring is removed? The internal, the internal ring. one. So how do you remove it? You just, oh, just, show us you just remove it. You can just, okay. It's just not a big deal. It's not a so this is a large condom, but this is not made out of latex. It's made out of nitrile. We'll go over how important that is. But all you do, it's, it's literally you take this part of it, and you insert it into the vagina all the way in. Right to where the cervix is. Yeah, I did try it. The turn part was what I had a little difficulty with. It takes three times to do this. Mm -hmm. It I, takes three yeah, times. I only tried it one time. This aspect sits on the outside. Mm -hmm. So the external ring sits on the outside. Which gives you more protection than a male it, condom. It gives you tremendously more protection. And that's and the, one of the most common questions I get from women is even if he's wearing a condom, aren't I at risk if our external genitalia that are not covered come This is the contact? only... By the way, you don't put this in. So you, you hold it, mm -hmm. you insert, mm -hmm. and then you can take the finger away. Mm -hmm. If you don't hold it, it gets pushed into the vagina, so that's not right. what you want to do. If I showed that correctly, you hold it, insert, and then you could have sex. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing is this is the only condom that can protect against HPV. Mm -hmm. It's the only one. Mm -hmm. So it's unbelievable. I mean, how, how important is it? Now, I did say that it's not made out of latex. See how easy that was mm -hmm. to put in? It yeah. really is. But this has to stay out. So the thing about uh, um, latex, it's rubber, and it does not, the heat does not transfer. It doesn't feel, feel right. This is made out of nitrile. It's what surgical gloves are made out of. Mm -hmm. Surgical gloves, you need sensation. So women and men have more sensation with this. A lot of men will say if a woman wears it, they don't even know that the woman is wearing a condom. Yeah, they're pretty clueless. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> uh, in fact, the sex workers use it for that reason. Uh -huh. Because you really can't feel well, it. Well, what so I've sweet. also heard some women say is they get additional clitoral stimulation That is correct. The they can get more. It's exactly a bonus. Right. But this really uh, gets, uh, uh, I don't want to say absorbed, but it, it kind of adheres mm -hmm. to the vaginal walls. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more sensation mm -hmm. with it, which is great. So that that's when I 
came up with this, when I saw this, I said, this is just remarkable. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the unbelievable part about it. You know, condoms, male condoms, you have to buy. Mm -hmm. This you don't have to buy. If you Explain have medical insurance, you. there's many different ways to get the female condom. If you have insurance, uh, you can, it's covered by the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. If Another you good benefit of Obamacare. No copay. Thank you, Obama. That's right. Thank you, Obama. <laughs> uh, there's, no, there's no cost. There's no copay. You need a prescription, though. If you have a prescription, you go to the pharmacist and say, how do you get a prescription? Because a lot of women are not going to go to the doctor. You go to uh, uh, you know, uh, our site, thefemalecondom.com, uh, and on the site, you can get a free prescription. Free prescription, uh, which means just put in your information, uh, use the code FC2, or try it on the site, and you get a free prescription. That prescription uh, is, it can be sent to you, or it goes right to the pharmacy. And the pharma, you just go pick it up at your local pharmacy, or you have them send it to you. That's no, it. Say you don't have, and it a comes in a twelve pack. Say you if don't, you have, don't a have a prescription. Can you just buy it? Yes, you could buy it. Uh, we took it off the shelves of, mm -hmm. of all the stores because it was too expensive, and they were marking it up. Mm -hmm. So you go to femalecondom.com and you buy it for a less expensive price mm -hmm. than it would be anywhere else. We've dropped the price, mm -hmm. made it more affordable. And what is the price? The price, there's still people who don't it, have health it, insurance. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's less than a dollar a condom mm -hmm. for, for this. Um, but it's, uh, you just go online and, and, uh, and you mm -hmm. see it. Yeah, there's still millions of people who don't have health insurance. So they would Well, okay, if you don't have health insurance, uh, yes, you go right to it. But, but our app on, our, on the female condom side mm -hmm. is Hey Doctor, H-E-Y-D-O-C-T-O-R. Hey doctor, where you can get uh, you know free prescription as I said, mm -hmm. uh, and again if you don't have it you could get it elsewhere too. It's available at all the health clinics mm -hmm. uh, in New York City and and all around the country. You can go and to the Planned clinics, Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. You can get it for free when you go there, but you only get a couple. Now the thing about this condom is you have to use it about three times right. to get used to it, and you can't reuse it. You can't you have reuse to it. Just That's right. Point it out. Also, colleges now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have programs where they give out the prescriptions and you get a pack of 10 of these. So speaking so of the ladies' room, I would love to see dispensers. Pack of 12. Pack of 12. I would love to see dispensers in ladies' rooms that you can just Absolutely. Get it right Certainly in, in colleges, for sure. In colleges, in bars. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. But yeah, you can also clubs, get it. Cruises. You know who uh, makes money from this? Uh, are the 340B clinics. Those mm -hmm. are like the HIV clinics and where they have you know pharmacies and they dispense it mm -hmm. to all their patients because if you have HIV or, or yeah. at risk of having it, you have to, have to use this. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of ways that you can get this. Easiest way, you go to uh, femalecondom.com, mm -hmm. you go to the app Hey Doctor, or you buy it right from the site. But if you want it for no cost, you get the prescription. So now show people the proper way to remove this. Well, you just pull it out. What happens is demonstrate. What happens is <laughs> you have to it, close you have to it. Twist it. Right. You have to twist it because we don't want anything in there to Correct. be spilled out. And it just comes right out. It's that simple, you know. So I think in the condom business, nobody wants to wear a condom. Nobody wants to wear latex. This is made out of nitrile. It's much more expensive to make, uh, but it's a much better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that it's a male condom is cheap. It doesn't matter if and you don't use it. what's the difference between nitrile and polyurethane? Because no, there no are male con condoms made out of polyurethane. Uh, right? It's the sensation and the heat transfer, mm -hmm. uh, which is much, much better. Remember, we use surgical gloves that are made out of nitrile. Mm -hmm. It's not made out of polyurethane. It's not made out of latex. So there's a reason we're doing this. Mm -hmm. So this is the premier best condom. Remember, let me repeat. People don't like wearing condoms. But women, now the, the thing about it is, and this is for, for your show mm -hmm. as well, is if you tell a man uh, that they don't have to wear a condom, mm -hmm. the, the men really don't like wearing as we mm -hmm. discussed. <laughs> I think we've You're established gonna, that. You, uh, and I think women, you have to protect yourself as well, right. right? And you're not going to protect yourself by relying on the guy. Mm -hmm. So you have to use this. Right. And this is regardless of contraceptive status. This is regardless That's of your right. postmenopausal. And in fact, postmenopausal women who are not in monogamous relationships or mutually monogamous relationships have to know that with vaginal atrophy, right. they are, which is just Much the thinning of the Correct. vaginal mucosa, the thinning of the vaginal lining, they're actually at increased risk for susceptibility. That's absolutely right. It's unbelievable. STDs. It, 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 is, it is unbelievable. 
But the other thing is for pleasure or for less pain, remember, it's an internal. Mm -hmm. When I say that, since it's inside, there's the rubbing, the, you don't feel it as much, and it hurts less. Yeah. So, so one of the amazing. things I love about your Ask Amanda video. That? What? Yeah, let me just think. Oh. There's a <laughs> safety one. They are lubricated. Well, pre-lubricated is perfect. <laughs> Which doesn't mean you may not also need additional lubrication. But one of the things That's I love correct. about that. No, but for this, most of the time you don't need more. Yeah. This, this comes mm -hmm. pre-lubricated. Mm -hmm. If you need more, uh, but remember, you need more lubrication if you're a woman because it hurts. Mm -hmm. This is internal. Mm -hmm. So it's going to hurt less. If it hurts at all. It should, shouldn't hurt. It's more pleasurable. Right. What I always say is if, if it hurts, you, you need to do something different. Correct. Like correct. Anyway, I could talk to you all day about this, but what's the most important thing that people need to know about condoms. Number one, take home message. I'll tell you what the most important thing people, I'll tell you what shocked me. Mm -hmm. Remember, I don't wear condoms, right? I'm married, I've been married for a long time. Is uh, that A long time being 100 years, Since years? 1981. Wow, that's when I graduated 91, from college. 2001, <laughs> 2011, 37 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. And I'm only 25 years old. <laughs> The thing that got me is, uh, it was shocked me was because um, a few things shocked me is that men don't wear condoms. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, what could, I mean, I don't understand. If, if the only way you could prevent STDs is a condom and men don't wear condoms, that was a shocker. Number two is when you go to the, uh, to the pharmacies uh, like CBS, there's a whole rack of condoms. Mm -hmm. And it's unbelievable. First of all, there's so many because not one really works and there's not a good one and you don't see there's not an alternative for women that's what got me mm -hmm. it's like well the only way you can prevent an std is have a guy wear a condom that makes no sense mm -hmm. if you're a woman you have to protect yourself so the fact that there's so few options and we are the only female condom in the united states mm -hmm. uh we sell uh, about 50 million of these a year to africa and brazil uh because and it's, and it's amazing they do all the studies there and they they Women have to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I think those are the things that really got me. And, and, and the fact that there's an epidemic going on mm -hmm. and there's a severe crisis and we're not doing much about it. And here we have an option and we've just launched this in the United States. Mm -hmm. You can get it from your doctor online, from your college, from your clinic, whatever it is, you, you, you can get all these things. And so we're going to do no hashtag excuses. no excuses. I love that. <laughs> We're all about hashtags because that. we're all about, oh. of course, we want all of our listeners tweet us additional comments and questions. We right. try to, you know, I'm at, at Dr. Donica. We try to answer as many of the questions. I also have at Ask Dr. Donica. We also have a weekly Facebook Live video uh, where we take people's most embarrassing questions. Um, some of them I don't think are so embarrassing right. because I think the most embarrassing question is the one you were too embarrassed to ask. Well, well, hold on a second. Here's the thing. Um, sex education is, where do you get, where do you learn sex education? Other than from us, right? Mm -hmm. Because in, in, in uh, junior high school or high school, you're learning about the sex education is wear a condom, how not to get pregnant. So my son told me when he was in eighth grade, uh, you know, they had the talk. And so I was dying to know what happened in the talk. Right. And he's like, Mom, I can summarize it for you in one sentence. Don't have sex, don't do drugs, or you'll die. <laughs> and that was basically, you know, the take-home message from eighth grade sex class in a very expensive private school. So, but just think about it. So what do you, what do you learn about sex once you're actually having sex? Mm -hmm. Well, I've written Size Matters. I've written The mm -hmm. New Naked. We have this show. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be working a lot more together. Yay. Like, right. We, we should work. so much fun. Absolutely. And uh, that's what the, the Dr. Harry Fish channel on Twitch is. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you might, uh, at DR Fish is uh, on Twitter if you want to ask me a question. Of course, Twitch is really interactive, so mm -hmm. we're going to, this is our first show, but once people get to know more and more, uh, we'll, um, we'll a answer questions right, right online. Um, but, and that's the whole part of sex re-education, because the other thing, for people of a certain age, that means beyond eighth grade, information changes. This wasn't available when most of us were in eighth and grade. And where do women get a lot of information? Cosmo. Cosmo, absolutely. And that's not good. I but gave also a, online. We a lot we don't of know online what sharing. I hope they get a lot of information from my podcast in the ladies' yes, room. Yes, as my a physician, website. correct. But we also get a lot of information from talking to each other. 
So women love to get information from the girlfriend grapevine. But I hope they're getting the right information. Right. One of the reasons I wrote my book, Size Matters, which is questions and answers, was because I didn't want to talk to my kids about sex education. (laughs) I'm an expert and I can't talk about it, but every question that you might have uh, is there. Mm -hmm. But I I tell you, this has been a fantastic, have we spent? A long time. A long time. And I could talk to you for another 16 hours. So we spoke for an hour before, for about an hour. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Our viewers need to get going because so, they're listening to this and watching this when they're on their Thank lunch you for break. having me on your podcast. I want to thank, me, thank you for having me on your channel. Twitch is the way to go. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to have the same. We're going to have more shows uh, on a regular basis as well. So thank you for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. That's all we have time for today. But let's keep the conversation going on Twitter or Facebook at Dr. Dunica. And please join us next week for another episode of In the Ladies Room with Dr. Dunica. Real conversations with real women about really intimate topics.